Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and I had a subscriber who's actually a regular poster, a guy by the name of Jason Robson, that posts on a lot of my videos. Uh, I believe he's over in the UK, middle-aged guy like me, guy's still pretty big, pretty jacked, likes to lift heavy, and uh, he wrote a comment, and he said, this type of program is really the only way in advanced, both in training experience and age, lifter can even think of improving their lifts, especially if they don't rely on tons of gear. This opinion will get criticized by younger guys who are often on a couple grams of gear a week. The proof is it of the pudding is in finding a guy in his 40s who is doing this year in, year out without getting hurt using big weights like JB. I also train this way due to age and recovery ability. My natural training uh, gravitated towards this naturally in an attempt to improve. He said something like that. I got a couple words wrong. But um, that's kind of the point, guys, and that's a point I always try to make to people. You know, a lot of times people be like, man, why do you talk about going slow? Why do you talk about taking your time? Why do you talk about milking gains? That's so lazy. Like, you guys watch me train. You really think my training is that lazy when I come in and do work sets on the deadlift for 500 plus pounds with no belt, no straps, wearing work boots so it's harder? Not about not having a work ethic. Not about accepting mediocrity. It's about stepping back and looking at the long game about looking at the long game and that's the difference guys I'm not some kid I'm not a kid who's up here um, I'm an old man at this point guys. I'm about to turn 41 coming up here real fast and you know what I'm walking around injury free my joints don't hurt my tendons don't hurt my hips don't hurt dudes I went to high school with Guys who played football on my high school football teams. Actually, I went to a couple different high schools. Uh, but guys on the football teams I knew, walking around now crippled, getting hip replacement surgeries, getting their bypasses done, or they've got damaged shoulders, damaged rotator cuffs. And here's the question I would ask you. A lot of the guys are like, well, you know, why should we listen to this approach? I don't know. Look at your dad. Most of you out there, when you think of that, a lot of the guys who criticize me, I look at their age and go, you do know I'm the same age as your dad, right? <laughs> uh, I'm the same age as your dad. You see your dad lifting what I lift with good form, a good technique. You see your dad walking around completely injury-free, doing cardio every day, lifting several days a week, repping out 500 on the deadlift, good blood work, happy, healthy. Let that sink in for a moment. All right, there's a difference between coming in and lifting and picking stupid lifts uh, and burning out versus understanding the long game. And I'll give you a specific point. I specifically broke down in a video the other day why people shouldn't be benching above their chest. And you know what someone comes up with there in there? Well, it could give me slightly better chest gain. So couldn't I just do it this way? Uh, maybe, you know, press to a rack so that I could still bench my upper chest without risking the bar coming down and, and snapping my stuff up. And, and so there you have it. You have guys who are still trying to come up with convoluted ways to do dangerous versions of an exercise because they hope, they hope that maybe, maybe they'll get 1% more gains in their chest. But they're willing to take really stupid risks to do it and use stupid variations of exercises, bad exercises that cause damage to shoulders, cause damage to joints, cause inflammation or calcification of connective tissue. I mean, tons of this stuff out there. How about doing skull crushers with your elbows in and lowering it to your face instead of behind your head? You don't think that causes inflammation, long-term tendonitis in your elbows? Of course it does. Jackasses still do it because they're hoping that they might get a hair more tricep development. I'll tell you right now, none of those guys are playing the long game. I can tell you right now, all the guys doing that right now in their 20s, they get to my age, they're not gonna be bench pressing at all anymore. They're not gonna be doing any tricep work. They're not gonna be doing dips, they're not gonna be doing bench presses, they're not gonna be doing press downs. If they do, it's gonna be on a machine wearing those elbow sleeves. Why? because they're doing stupid stuff, not thinking of the long term. They're not standing back thinking, hey, what's gonna keep me lifting consistent and injury free and pain free for the next 15 years so that I can keep making gains, so I can keep moving forward, so I can still feel good and be strong and have muscle and be fit. 
they're not thinking about that. They're only thinking, okay, yeah, this might cause some inflammation, but you know, I'm hoping I'll get a little more gains out of it. Well, those gains slow down when you got to start wrapping everything up. Those gains start slowing down when you hurt all the time from your bad exercise selection or execution. And the person who's able to keep training pain-free, he's going to pass you down the road, isn't he? Because everyone wants to play the short game. They're going to do this or that, hoping for a 1% advantage. You know what? Why don't you learn to back down and take 10% less results, but keep getting them and never get hurt, never get injured. You can live at 90% effort. In fact, all the research shows 90% effort produces just as much muscle and strength as 100% does. But everyone wants to go. They think they're supposed to go 100%. Bad form, imitating bodybuilders, forced reps, forced negatives. Instead of understanding it, it's about adaptative stress. You know what? The human body thrives on microloading. The human body is an amazing machine. It will adapt to any small repeated increase uh, in stress put upon it. It will adapt structurally and physically adapt. And that means, most of the time, that means muscles grow. That's a big part of the uh, physical adaptation process. Muscle fibers get thicker. Um, capillary beds grow to improve oxidization to muscles. A lot of different things happen. It thrives in that environment. The body doesn't thrive on being shocked. It doesn't sh thrive on being beat up. And there's something to be said for taking your time with all of this, mastering your lifts. A lot of people come and say, man, you know, I don't think you should be using a heavier weight for that, that strict standing press. And I'm like, you come in and do uh, seven or eight sets with that weight from a pause off your chest. You come in and do it. But the point is, the point is, so what? You think I should be lifting more weight? I'm going to keep making gains lifting that weight. And I'm going to add a little bit here, a little bit there. When I master using each given weight on each given exercise. When I master doing 175 pounds over and over and over on an exercise, I'll go to 185. When I have the technique perfect where I can do huge amounts of workload with that weight, set after set after set, I can increase and move forward gradually. And I will. It's a smart way to train. The smart way to train is to listen to your body. When something starts to hurt, it's time to deload. When something starts to hurt, it's time to step back and say, maybe I'm doing this wrong. See, people act like, and you get a lot of these bodybuilders and all these younger dumbasses, they get this idea, oh, that's pain. Pain is weakness leaving the body. No, pain is your body telling you you're being stupid. Pain is your body telling you, hey, you're injuring yourself. You're doing something wrong. I don't mean a little bit of a burn, a little bit of a pump. You shouldn't be hurting. You shouldn't be hurting. Uh, and especially when it's connective tissue. When your tendons hurt, when your joints hurt, it's time to seriously reevaluate what you are doing. I'm going to tell you right now, I, the guys I see all the time who they need to start wrapping stuff up, that's the beginning of the end. It's another reason I even went away from wrist wraps. You know why? Because if my wrist hurt, that's my wrist telling me something. Right? If my wrist hurt from too much bench pressing, you think I need to put wraps on? Or is it time to deload and listen to my body and take a little break? Back the pounds down for a week. Let everything heal. Let the inflammation go down. Recover. You know what? Sleep and recovery are everything. You can stimulate all the growth in the world you want, but if you don't rest, you don't recover, you don't get proper nutrition, you're not going to grow from it. And I'm not saying not to get in and stimulate. I'm not telling you not to stimulate the hell out of a muscle. I'm not telling you not to come in and train hard. But you better know your limits and you need to know ahead of time how much harder you're going to train. You need to know what you're going to add and have a plan. You don't just come in and randomly work hard. You better have a plan in place. Today I'm going to add one more set. Tomorrow I'm going to try to put five more pounds on the bar. And see if I can get the same reps or only lose a rep. With good form. Alright, planning, structure, recovery. 
proper execution of your lift, mastering the technique and form on every single lift that you touch. That's playing the long game. That's how you keep doing this year after year. This is how you avoid getting hurt. Thinking through the consequences of all of this, listening to your body. And you never stop learning. You master everything that you do. All right, that's the long game. I mean, do you guys still want to be lifting heavy when you're in your 30s, your 40s? You still want to be strong and fit and uninjured? Or do you want to be a has-been? you want to be one of those guys who say, yeah, I used to lift, but uh, then I tore my rotator cuff. And now I just sit around drinking beer, watching TV, and getting fat. Who do you want to be? All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.